Yo guys and welcome back to another video and welcome back to my official in detail review slash thoughts slash everything about episode 1 of season 1 of Doctor Who the brand new reboot Space Babies so basically in today's video I'm going to be sort of going over Space Babies from beginning to end characters to everything and explain my thoughts on it and how I found it as an episode etc etc so I'm gonna be ranking these a little bit and sort of giving opinions and all that kind of stuff as well so yeah so I guess let's start off with the actual storyline itself uh, personally I think this is a great way to quickly and efficiently introduce everyone to the Doctor Who universe. The Hooniverse, as you may say. But yeah, I think it's, it's a really, really good idea to use this episode as a good way to get everyone on board, as well as introducing Ruby to the Doctor's life as well. So you're kind of, as an audience, seeing this episode through Ruby's eyes and sort of learning everything along with Ruby, especially if you're a character, uh, sorry, especially if you are a new viewer and haven't seen Doctor Who before. So, yeah, I think this is really, really good. And just, yeah, I absolutely love this story. I, I genuinely really enjoyed the story. I think it is a really, really cool idea. So, Running through all the all of the stuff, you know, going to physical places. This little stop off at the dinosaur place, which CGI was absolutely insane in this episode, and I will actually be touching on that a little bit more later on in this video. But as the actual story arc goes itself, obviously you've got the space babies, uh, little babies running a space station full of space babies who can talk. I really, really like this concept. I think it's a really, really fun little concept. But then you also got the bogeyman or the bogeyman monster or whatever it is. Because realistically, we don't find out 100% what it is. We only know by the end of it that it is a indeed a bogeyman made of bogeys. And yeah, that's about it. So... Yeah, the storyline, I absolutely loved it. I, I genuinely think it was a good horror-based storyline as well. The jump scares were really, really well done. They were not over-excessive or anything like that, but they played a really, really good point as in, you know, when you were introducing the bogeyman, which is very, very good. And I, I think it's just a really, really good use of jump scares in Doctor Who and it worked very very well and then obviously as you find out the bogey monster is not some huge threat the, you know the, the tensions lower and that is obviously displayed in that scene where the doctor saves the bogeyman and I, I just think this is a really really good doctory scene to Introducing this episode because you've got the doctor sort of Reflecting on himself and he's like no, I am the doctor and then he goes in there and saves the day And I think this is just a really really good introduction story as well for season one episode one As well as being quite different and unique as we've literally never had an episode like this before And I really really enjoyed it as well so that is the storyline over and done with. Let's go ahead and talk about the characters. So let's start off with the Doctor and the Doctor and Ruby. So I've got to say, the Doctor and Ruby's dynamic is insanely good. I'm really, really loving it. And I've got to say that the Doctor and Ruby in this whole thing genuinely has floated to the top of my Doctor and Companion list as you could say I, i'm really really enjoying their portrayal of their characters and also the roles and you know the, the doctor and shooting at work as the doctor is really really good i i must admit he has very very quickly became one of my favorite doctors 
after literally this story and the church on Ruby Road. And that is something that I find it quite insane. Same with Ruby as well, who is played by Millie Gibson. She does an absolutely amazing job, especially for somebody who came from, I believe she was on like Coronation Street or one of them soap TV shows. So to think that she's took this leap from that kind of thing to Doctor Who and is performing at this level in Doctor Who just shows what a great actress she is. And Shooty, obviously he was in Sex Education and I believe he's in the Barbie movie as well. So he's had a couple of big gigs before, but coming into Doctor Who, you can tell that he's really, really shining in this role. He feels like the Doctor and he really, really does. He's done a great job of performing as the Doctor, but making it his own thing as well. And, you know, making him his own thing, I, it definitely feels like a unique Doctor, but you can also see little traits little personality traits from the previous Doctors as well and I think that's just how it should be with Doctor Who and I absolutely love it. So after talking about that let's talk about the bogey monster, the big villain of this story. I say villain but I think the bogey monster was really really good. I like the prosthetics used, I like the again the jump scares that were used in there as well and I think that you know all the choreograph, the all of the choreography and you know makeup and stuff for the actual bogeyman is really really good. I think this villain was very very convincing and really really pulled it off great. And yeah, pro possibly one of the best Doctor Who one-off villains to date in terms of how it looks and things like obviously you don't get any speech or anything like that but I think that just adds to how scary something is because if something just doesn't speak throughout the entire thing it's just making these groaning noises and grumbling noises that I think that does raise the tension because when it is on screen it is impactful and I really really like that I think it's really really good so that is the characters over and done with. Let's talk about the sets. The sets and the designing of the sets. Uh, I've got to say, all of the sets were really, really well made and really well dressed as well. I think they were done really, really well. They have reused some parts as well from the Wild Blue, uh, the Wild Blue Yonder spaceship. And I think that's just really, really cool how they do just repurpose the old sets and and sort of, you know, mush them together and make something that looks completely new, but it works very, very well as well. So I think that is really, really cool how they did that. Uh, but yeah, all I do really, really like how much practical effects they were using in this because Wild Blue Yonder, a lot of the spaceship was CGI, and you could tell to an extent that it was CGI for some of the bigger stuff because it didn't just quite add up and stuff. I do have my fair little bugs about this episode of CGI, but we're gonna get onto that next. But as the actual practical sets, I absolutely love when, you know, TV and film use a lot of practical sets and practical locations. So yeah, very, very good. Obviously the TARDIS set looked amazing as always, but you've also got like, um, some of this CGI stuff as well, which I'm going to get into right now. But without, yeah, without, uh, let's, yeah, get, let's get into the CGI. So I've got to say, all of the CGI for the spaceships, the settings, all of that was really, really well done. I absolutely loved the CGI for the spaceships, and I was genuinely in awe. I was so, like, I was like, oh my god, this looks insane. Compared to what we've seen before on Doctor Who, this really ups the level. And yeah, very, very good CGI on that. The only bit that I would say that is a little, little bit off, I would say is the baby's mouths when they're speaking, because I do think that some with some of the shots and some of the babies, the mouths don't represent like the mouths and the dialogue don't represent the facial expressions and it is very very difficult I, I completely understand that 
doing something like that is very experimental and also very, very difficult to animate as well. I would not want to know how much stress the animation team went through for this episode because that, that would have been a very difficult one to do. I can assure you on that. And I've done a little bit of like CGI myself. I, you know, obviously I'm a filmmaker and I do a lot of filmmaking. I've done a little bit of my CGI and stuff myself, but I've got to say this CGI was absolutely next level. And just all of the all of the stuff. And you got to say the new the new title sequence too. I've got to talk about the new opening title. It looks insane. They listened to the feedback, they fixed the opening title. It was a little bit short, and that was one of my little nitpicks about the 60th. The opening title was a little bit short, but I kind of forgave it, forgot about it, and then I realized they extended the opening title, they added a little connector bit where you sort of fly through some asteroids, go into the little wormhole, and I think it is absolutely insane. I love how, how beautiful and stunning this opening title looks, how cinematic it is, and in its 4K glory it looks insane. So I've got to say, oh, that, that's amazing. And the last thing that I do want to say as well is the sound design, I've got to say, absolutely on point. The sound design and the music for this episode, perfectly good. I just really, really enjoyed the all of uh, more or less the sound design the music was good but the sound design was very very good in this episode so i suppose that is really my whole review over the entirety of space babies and i would say that this has got to be a solid out of 10 i've got to give it a solid like 8 out of 10 i can't give it a 10 out of 10 just because of them little nitpicks, but I would say an 8 or an 8.5 out of 10 is very, very fair for this episode. I really, really enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it, and it's just an absolutely great piece of TV and I fly by, so that does say something. But yeah, that is my whole review on Doctor Who Episode 1, Season 1, Space Babies. We're going to be reviewing episode 2 very very soon the full review will be out in a couple of hours so stay tuned subscribe to this channel hit that subscribe button turn on the post notifications we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers on this youtube channel as quickly as humanly possible so please just click that subscribe button i would massively appreciate it and if you enjoy doctor who content i've got a lot of good stuff coming up soon we've got more reviews coming up soon of physical Doctor Who episodes, as well as more little bits like trailer music and all that kind of stuff. But also, I'm going to be reviewing the... Yeah! You ready? <laughs> hey! Let's go! Back! Yo, once again I'm back around, uh, real shit back in style, uh, haters reconcile, uh, I'm so black and proud, first class tickets now, uh, feet all in the eye, uh, everybody looking down, everybody get red when you drown, huh? Look at me up, I'm putting it down, you picking it up Checking the models, they want us to go to college just so we can be stuck Go to school to make a living, or teach yourself to make a fortune Common sense, welcome to the apocalypse, bitch I'm one of the horsemen